Hello people of the internet, I'm the Gaming 11 and welcome back to another video of mine. Today I'm doing a 200,000 subscriber Q&A. I want to thank you all so much for your support on me reaching 200,000 subscribers. It's been a great journey and another milestone has been hit and I just want to thank you guys so, so much for your support. I was going to do something else but didn't really have much time to prepare for it because of these exams. They're pretty much over now, I've got three more. But uh, you guys seem to like Q&A so I'm doing Doing another one. I got these questions from Twitter. You can follow me at the Gaming Lemon. Link is in the description below. In case I do have any other Q and A's, I want to hear my opinions on stuff or keep updated on videos, stuff like that. So without further ado, let's get into the question. The first one comes from MCX Belay Gaming. He asks, "What was your inspiration to start YouTube?" Well, the thing is, MC Gaming, I didn't really have much of an inspiration. I just kind of started it because I thought it'd be fun. But my inspiration didn't really come from anyone. I wasn't really watching many YouTubers at the time. It was literally just a little hobby where if I got bored I'd just make another video. I wasn't involved with any other YouTubers or trying to get popular or anything like that. I literally did it just when I wanted to really. So that answers your question. I'm sorry if you're expecting some YouTuber. This one's kind of related to that. Punisher784 asks, what who is your favourite YouTuber? It switches all the time. Uh, like I said before, I still don't watch many people, but I do watch some people on occasion. I don't really have a favourite one, but uh, I have a few. I think my favourite ones at the moment are... Karyos Speedy, he's quite funny. He's a Call of Duty commentator, he makes comedy videos. Nerd Cubed, who does loads of uh, various Let's Plays, he's really funny. JX23, he does various sorts of things. He does COD commentaries, Let's Plays, funny videos, and loads of other various series. He likes to vary up his content a bit, I find, which is quite cool. I like people who vary up their content a lot. And also KSI LegitBT, who I don't watch him too much anymore, but I still think he's quite funny. Coxie asks, what are your plans for the future? And a kinky little love heart right there. I don't have some proper plan or anything, but uh, I'm just going to go into college once secondary school is done, which is in three days I finish, when I finish my last exam. It's over. Uh, I'm going to do BTEC Media Production there, and that is literally everything to do with making and editing films. You create TV adverts, documentaries, trailers, and also little films as well, I think. Which honestly is what I love. I didn't pick it because I wanted to go into a job for it. I just picked it because I thought I'd love it. You know, teachers and stuff always say that uh, you got to pick the stuff that will be good for you for your job. But for me, I'm not too sure what I wanted to, yeah, what I wanted to do. But uh, I do know I want to go into the film industry. That's all I want to do. I don't have a specific job in the film industry. I just want to go into it because I'm really, really interested. And I'm pretty sure that would help. You know, be tech uh, diploma in media production. So that'd be quite cool. But yeah, that answers your question. Let's go on to the next one. What advice do you have for people just starting channels? I get this question so, so often. It's pretty much one of my most common questions I get asked. Uh, I have three main tips. My tips always vary all the time. but uh, And also, other YouTubers have loads of different tips and key things on what you should do. I think mine are kind of different as well. But uh, my first out of three main tips is be consistent. You know, have a regular upload scheme. By that, I don't mean... Don't have an upload schedule for like different series, say, I don't know, Monday, Minecraft, Tuesday, COD, because, well, you could do that. I'm not saying don't do it, but I find that if you try to do that, maybe on one day you'd really want to do a series, so you do that instead, and then it kind of breaks down a bit, and you look a little, uh, you look like, you, you look like you're bad at planning with your channel. I'd say don't go with that, but what I mean by being consistent is say, set yourself a goal on how many videos you want to do a week or a day. Say you want to do one every day, keep doing one every day. Do not stop, no matter what, unless you have a proper excuse, for example, you can't upload because I know YouTube, YouTube's not working, which is quite often. But if you set yourself a goal to say upload that every day, and you keep uploading every day, it will attract more viewers. I find that viewers like a, a channel that's consistent, a channel that uploads every day and is reliable as well. So you can't just go, oh, I don't really feel like making a video today, or you kind of get getting a bit lazy or whatever. If you do that, then your views will drop. That is, but that, that's the key thing to everything. If you're lazy at something, then it won't work out, you know? I know at the moment I've been really consistent, you know, I'm aware of that. I keep saying to you guys that I am in the middle of the exams, although I've got three left, I've done ten. And now I've got three left. The lot, my last exam is this Friday coming up. And at that moment, I'm going to try and do two videos a day for summer. 
Uh, that's going to be my main target. I was doing two videos a day or one video a day uh, the month before I had my exams. And my viewers and subscribers increased loads. And then, of course, it dropped again when I had these exams. Because I had to I had to focus on exams and YouTube at the same time. And if you focus on two things at the same time, then they'll kind of both deteriorate a bit. So I started to focus on exams a bit more, which is why I've been a little inconsistent. A second tip I find, uh, not many other YouTubers give this tip. Uh, but I say be original, be creative. You know, you can still get big if you just do COD commentaries, but the chances of that are very, very slim compared to a channel that does original content. Back when I started doing Let's Plays, I, I started to pick games um, that uh, no one really did before. Although I kind of started to forget that later down the line when I started doing Minecraft and stuff. Not for the Xbox, I started doing it for the PC a bit. But my first playthrough, which was Sims 3, for the Xbox 360, no one else had done a playthrough. I checked up, so I thought I'd do one, and that started to become really popular. In fact, the first episode got 100,000 views right now. I think it just hit it. Well, maybe that's just because it's my first video and people want to see what it was like. And because that was the first one I did, or I think the first one that uh, I actually kept going at, because I think there was like three other people who uploaded like two episodes but then stopped. Uh, it attracted a lot of views, especially for starting up. I think I got. Uh, around 5,000 subscribers in about, say, uh, 8 months, which is really, really good if you got no support. Me, I got no support. Like I said, I was just on my own. I didn't really speak to many people at that time because, like I said, I wasn't really too involved with it. And that's quite a good start if you're getting no support from people. Nowadays, I see channels, they just start a channel and ask everyone for likes. And basically, the channel just like them and they get like, 100 subscribers within a day. And that's just ridiculous. And then, of course, uh, I started to do Minecraft Xbox 360 stuff. Because, of course, no one else was doing that. And I thought, uh, when it was announced, I, I was following that game as soon as it was announced at E3. And I kept telling myself that I'm going to make loads and loads of videos in it when it releases. Because I'm going to be the first one to do all that stuff. I'm going to be the first one to make a Let's Play news and all that stuff. And I bet it will get loads of views. I kept saying that to my friend Slogger, man. And look what it did. I can never be more thankful for that. I know Minecraft Xbox was the thing that kicked my channel off. And I'll always keep doing it. You know, I know at the moment I'm starting to do less of it. I may start to do less of it in the future, but I will still keep doing videos on it. But I'm not saying do original games. Do original content too. For example, oh, I don't know. Let's take a look at some popular YouTubers like, I don't know, KSI. With that style of editing, he was, I think he was the only one or the only semi-popular person at that time to use that style of editing. But uh, the way he edited his videos, that was, he was kind of the first one to do it. And that's what kind of kicked his channel off because it was it was fresh, it was unique. And I want to, I just want to say like, be unique, think outside the box, and don't do what all the other popular YouTubers are doing because because they're really popular, they're going to go to them, uh, not a small channel. If you get what I mean. And my final tip is simply just to enjoy. It. You know, if you're starting up YouTube just because you want to get that YouTube money, and perhaps you are sick of doing videos and you hate your subscribers, and then people will probably see that. You know, I see channels all the time. It's so 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 obvious they're just doing it, you know, for the money. And they don't give a crap about their subscribers. They don't give a crap about their videos either, as long as it gets views. And you can simply tell they don't enjoy it. But if you enjoy it and in your head it's not just money, money, money all the time when you're doing YouTube, then that's probably going to help your views a bit. I'm not sure if it's everyone, but for me, if I enjoy something while I'm working, I'll work at it 200% better than I normally would if I didn't like it. I'd put so, so much effort into it if I enjoyed it, and therefore the quality would come out better. And I think that's the same with YouTube. If you honestly enjoy it, then your, the, the, your quality of videos and the amount of effort we'll put into you will increase so much. So what I'm saying is, enjoy it. I'm not saying don't enjoy the money, don't, you know, like, don't, don't get involved with money at all. I'm just saying enjoy it. You know, if you enjoy a certain type of content that you start making, and you don't like the content that you start making at the moment, then do more of that. you got to find a mix of what your fans like and what you enjoy too, I find. You know, you see some channels, they do whatever the viewers want and whatever gets some views. And you see some channels that do whatever they want to do and don't listen to the people. I never knew what I wanted to do, so I just kind of made a mix. But yeah, that was quite a long question. Sorry about that. That could probably be used for a separate commentary. Anyway, let's go on to the next question. What is your favourite series that you did? I would say this, without a doubt, it would probably be my first playthrough. Actually, no, my second playthrough, The Sims 3 Pets for Xbox 360. The Sims 3, The Ordinary Sims 3 for Xbox uh, 360. That was that was a separate game. The Sims 3 Pets comes on like a separate disc. 
I found that one to be the best one because I think it was my let's play that went up to like 50 parts or like it was someone like 54 parts in the end and I've never done that many videos on a let's play I, I, I'm not very good at let's plays uh, at keeping consistent at them I'm gonna try 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 and do uh, more series and be as consistent as I can but I enjoyed that one so much because I enjoyed the game the people who watched it loved it which I really really thank I know there are still some old time subscribers uh, who came from The Sims 3 and The Sims 3 Pets. Uh, I saw one of them like comment on my videos the other day. And I know they're still here. Some of my old, really old time subscribers, old time lemonades, they're still here. And it's really, really cool to see. But I enjoyed it as well because I felt like I was a community with everyone in the comment section. Because I was a small channel back then, I kind of knew all the regular commenters. You know, I replied to everyone. It's quite hard to now. It's really... Yeah, it's really, really hard to now to uh, to reply to everyone. So don't get annoyed if I don't reply to your tweet or comment. It's quite hard to. And I wasn't concentrating on fame or anything either. It was just like a little community. And I made videos for them and they discussed them. And I discussed it with them. And it was quite fun. There were loads of funny moments in the series as well. Going on to the next question. We have Beechel. Some of you may know Beechel. He's another Minecraft XBLA YouTuber. He asks, What is the worst thing about YouTube? Should be interesting. Indeed. I'm not going to address this as the worst thing about YouTube because that makes it sound like YouTube is bad. It's not. It's honestly the funnest thing I've ever got to do. I'm going to say this as the least best thing. <laughs> I don't know if you'd count this as something, but I'd say demotivation. You know, sometimes I've had this like a couple times... Uh, throughout my channel sometimes you go from loving making videos and it's the only thing you want to do to, to hating it you're just sick of it and you want to take a break but uh, you feel like you shouldn't take a break you get demotivated because you're doing it so 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 much that you just get tired by it and it's a really really bad thing to get to get the feeling that you're, you're not enjoying making videos anymore when you used to love it not too long ago but I was pumping out videos so so much that uh Again, I just, I just got sick of it, so I decided to like do some new stuff, and I really, really liked it. I tried something new, and I loved it, so I started uh, creating that sort of content, and because I was making that sort of content, and not the other sort of content, I wanted to make the other sort of content as well now, so I went back to that, and started making more of that content as well. So basically, I kind of took a break from creating the type of content I was used to, so the main thing is if you just get demotivated, take like a creative break. Just take like, I don't know, a week off from making videos. Because uh, you do find that when you pump out loads of videos, eventually you start to get sick of it. So I'd just say take a break before you really, really start to get demotivated. Because it is a really, really bad feeling when you get feel that something you love, you don't enjoy it anymore. It's really, really bad. And people will see if you don't enjoy your videos because you sound, you, you, I don't know, you sound depressed. A little depressed, you sound a bit moody, you know, your quality's down, you don't put as much effort into videos because you just don't want to. T Power HD asks Thoughts on the Xbox One and PS4. Now, at the time of making this, Sony just finished their press conference as well as Microsoft, so now we get some of the confirmed facts. At the moment, uh, I, well, first I want to say uh, I've always stuck with Xbox apart from the PS2, but uh, I've stuck with the Xbox 360, you know, since I've pretty much got it. I've always thought it was a superior console in this generation, and uh, I thought I was going to really love the Xbox One, but at the moment, Sony, I'm kind of drifting towards Sony, towards the PS4. You know, I really don't like the route the Xbox One is going in, I don't like the fact that you have to stay connected to the internet. I don't. I know you don't have to stay connected to the internet, you know, you can stay off it if you don't connect for 24 hours, but, you know, that's pretty much, you have to stay connected to the internet. You know, I don't like the fact that you don't actually have the Xbox itself. It's pretty much just something you bought from the servers. You know, what happens when the servers go down? What happens when Microsoft stops supporting the Xbox One? You know, does it does it just go? Do they assume that no one plays it anymore, so they just leave it? And I really don't like the fact that you have to have the Kinect plugged in or the fact that it actually spies on you and all that stuff. I wouldn't want Microsoft spying on me with their camera. And I hate the fact that I have to keep it plugged in all the time. I don't want to connect. My room is tiny. It's so compact. I won't even be able to use it other than voice commands. But I'm not going to use my Xbox for voice commands. I have a controller right here. It seems really stupid to just walk in the room and go, Xbox on, Xbox play game. I have a controller. And let's be honest, it will be like the Kinect is at the moment. It will be glitchy. It won't work. 
it will get stuff wrong, and a microphone will sound absolutely terrible when you're talking with a friend in party or something. I mean, what will really happen is you go, Xbox, play game. Did you say Xbox, Netflix? No, I said play get Xbox turning off. Although, if the voice commands actually work properly, then fair enough, but, but you will know it won't. It will be glitchy and it won't work. I mean, I have had a Kinect before, I bought it the day it came out and hated it. In fact, it's some, it's in some cardboard box somewhere up the stairs, because it, it's glitchy and it's gimmicky and I don't like it. You know, I, I, I got a controller here, you know, I don't want to connect. And another thing is the used games. The fact that Microsoft is pretty much giving a middle finger to those who use used games, because obviously they're not allowing that now unless you pay a terminal fee, so you might as well just buy the new game. But I don't know about you, but I buy used games pretty much all the time, unless of course they're brand new on pre-order. And the reason we all buy used games is of course the price. The next gen games are going to be very, very expensive, maybe maybe too much emphasis there, but they are going to be a lot more expensive than they are now. It's going to cost a lot more money to actually produce a game because it's on the next gen console, and therefore they're going to have to up the price on the games. And I don't like the fact, again, that you're not really owning the used game because you buy the used game and then it's linked to your account and then no one else can use it it's, it's like the disc doesn't work anymore it's, it, it's just a piece of metal let's say i go out and buy watchdogs for the xbox one and let's say i install it on my xbox play it for a day and the next day for whatever reason i get banned forever what happens then do i get my games back do i get my money back i have to make a new account of course so what happens then do i have to buy them all again might as well step in your goody two shoes for Microsoft, you wouldn't want to get banned and spend all those money again on games, freaking hell, that'd be so expensive. And I'm drifting more towards the PS4 of course, simply because you can trade in used games and all that, there's no online DRM, and it's cheaper, and in my opinion, it's got better exclusives. And that's just my opinion. Those are my thoughts on the Xbox One, those are my personal thoughts, you know, you guys have uh, your right to your own opinion, so don't, you know, hate on mine or anything. Next question from Dat Saints fans. What is your goal for subscribers, like 500,000 subscribers, as an example? My all time goal for when I started YouTube was to get 100,000 subscribers. Uh, I thought that was a realistic goal to achieve. It would be like a million or something, but I know I would never really achieve that, and 100,000 subscribers would seem possible. And I've got it! So I'm like, yeah! And now I'm doing like a goal every year in terms of subscribers. Uh, for this year, I'm aiming for 250,000. I got that. Uh, I set that goal on the January the 1st. You know, I set one every year just so it's something to push forward to and give you more motivation. But I've also got an all time subscriber goal again, and this time. Of course, it's going to be a million subscribers. Like it was with 100,000 subscribers, a million I know is... is I'm probably not going to get it. Well, that's what I thought when I got 100,000 subscribers, or when I was aiming for that even. But I do know that it's possible, so it gives me something to push forward to, you know, it gives you more motivation. And it's something that I'm hoping that will happen some point in my life. That'd be really, really, really cool achievement to reach 100... Not 100, a million subscribers. I really want a gold plaque to a YouTube logo that you get when you reach a million subscribers. Just want that hanging in my room somewhere, so like above my monitor, so I'd see it all the time. That would be really cool. But uh, like I said, I doubt I could get it unless I work at this till I'm like 20 or something. But we'll see. Who knows what the future will bring us. Next question comes from DemonKid7. How long have you been making YouTube videos? I think I started this channel uh, on like the 30th of June, somewhere around there, so that's like a, oh yeah, what year, 2011. So 30th of June 2011, somewhere around that day was when I started up this YouTube thing. Uh, 20 days from now around, so about 3 weeks from now is my 2 year anniversary, which is cool. Next question from Jamie Scott 17 what's your top 3 games that you are most excited for that are being released this year? I'm not going to put them in ranking order because I can't really decide. I'm not very good at making decisions. But one of them that's actually coming out on Friday is Animal Crossing New Leaf. It's already out in America. And I just, in fact, ordered the uh, the 3DS edition of Animal Crossing. I'm only buying a 3DS for this game. I'm a massive fan of Animal Crossing. I was playing it since Wild World. And it's like one of my... It's, it's definitely in the top five favorite games that I've ever played. It's a really, really chilled out game. I love chilled out games. One that makes you relax, one that you can go on if you're feeling stressed. Just makes you chill out. It's really, really relaxed and I love it. The next one would probably be GTA 5. What else but GTA 5? That will probably be, be my most anticipated game for this year. I've been waiting two years for it since it was announced. Jesus Christ. No, actually, I think it was announced in like November 2011. So nearly two years 
until it's released from when it was first announced. I'm so, so excited for this game. I've already started planning different videos for it. And we haven't even seen any gameplay from it. I'm just hearing loads of these little details that we're getting. Like, for example, the giant blimp that you can drive from a pre-order bonus. The fact that you can get BMXs again. And just writing these little ideas in a little notepad. And then putting them all together for one giant fun touch. But I'm looking forward to that game so much. Because uh, I, I know it's going to be more like San Andreas. Not like GTA 4. You know, where it was just all urban, all city area. It's going to have more mountains. And it's going to have Mount Chiliad back. Hopefully we can go on the search for Bigfoot again like we did in San Andreas. And my last game, oh, I don't know, I think it's either a choice between Battlefield 4 or Watch Dogs. I'm really not too sure, I'll probably say Watch Dogs because Battlefield 4, despite how great it looks, it it looks pretty similar to Battlefield 3, let's, let's not lie here, it looks pretty similar. And because it's similar to Battlefield 3, I'm probably going to get bored of it within like the space of two months or something. But Watch Dogs is fresh. It's something really, really new. The graphics and gameplay look absolutely amazing. And I cannot wait for that game. It looks incredible. But yeah, those are my top three games coming out for this year. SAFC3836 asks, To compare to me, what grades do you think you would get in your GCSEs? Also, who inspired you to start YouTube? I'm not going to answer the second question, of course, because that was my first question. But at the moment, uh, considering I've done like 80% of the exams, I reckon I got somewhere around B's to C's, maybe like 1A, probably on chemistry. I freaking bossed that exam. That was probably my best exam I did on was chemistry. So I'm hoping I got an A in science, like a B in English, a C or B in maths. I'm, I'm not that great in maths, to be honest. Although today's maths exam went really, really well, surprisingly. The fact that I didn't know half the topics, like a B in history, B's in C's and other stuff. Basically like half B's, half C's and maybe one or two A's if I'm lucky. An A star is not even an option. I did get one A star though, I got an A star in English creative writing. Now I think that was my only A star I ever got, so maybe I'm a gifted author, maybe I should start writing books and stuff. Can we have an update on Mini Lemon? asks Lemon Follower. If you guys don't know, I have another new sibling entering the family in about two months. I'm quite excited. You know, I already have one older brother and one younger sister. But they were all born around the same time as me. Well, obviously, I don't remember being my brother being born because he's older than me. So I didn't really get to have the kind of uh, relationship that you have with like a really young sibling. And I really wanted someone like that. You know, I want to be that older brother that they look up to and the fact that I can look out for them. And I want to help raise he or she well. And hashtag mini lemon was something I just put on Twitter just as something to address the baby. Ferks DJ FM asks, how long does it usually take to make a video? Well, that depends because, you know, all the different videos I make, of course, take, you know, different amounts of time to make. But, uh, say something like this, something like a commentary or a let's play will take about an hour. You know, about 20 minutes to a minute, uh, you just put it all together, which will take about 5 minutes, and you render it for like 20 minutes, which is normally roughly how much it will take for me, then I just upload it. But something like, say, I don't know, a fun taj or something like that, something that takes a lot of editing. Let me take a video as an example, something like Lemonators FC. A new series that I've got going on, Fever Ultimate Team, that takes about 5 hours uh, to edit the whole thing. Uh, the recent one took about 5 hours, you know, maybe different lengths can take different times. But uh, I spend a lot of time editing those ones, it's really, really fun to edit. And that's why there's only like one or two of those episodes a week, because I can't do that every day. Well, I probably could if I did this as like a full-time thing. But, you know, not at the moment, because I'm still a student. Let's move on to the next question from Broomycraft. It was also... Minecraft XBLA YouTuber, he asks, When you started your channel, did you ever think you'd make it this far? Now, like I said, when I first started, my goal was 100,000 subscribers because I never thought I'd reach it. So, I, I thought I would never reach 100,000 subscribers. So, just to reach 200,000 subscribers is a massive milestone. I really had to take some time to reflect on what just happened when I actually looked on my channel randomly and it said 200,000 exactly. It was a weird feeling because you you would you honestly never would think you would reach it and then you did. And now I have no idea where this will take me in the future. You know, I could because this is obviously gonna keep on going, so it can only get bigger. And now I keep on wondering what will happen in the future, but uh of course if you focus too much in the future then you'll forget what's going on at the present moment. So I'm not gonna focus on the future or dwell in the past. Just gonna set my mind on the current moment. Deep words, deep words, man. But yeah, that was kind of unrelated to the question, but no. 
I honestly, honestly never thought I'd reach you this far. I know YouTubers say that all the time, but I honestly never thought I would. By Corey asks, who was your first ever person you subscribed to on YouTube? I'm not sure if this is related to gaming or not, but uh, it still comes out with the same answer. I looked at this question, I thought it was a good question, and I wanted to use it in my Q&A, but I had to think for like 10 minutes, who was the first person I subscribed to? I really had to think hard, and then I remembered back in like, say, I don't know, 2008? I don't know, age as an age as ago. When I first discovered YouTube and all the gaming videos on it, I was a big fan of Call of Duty 4 and commentaries back then weren't even thought of it. In fact, they just started up and they started to get really popular. And that was literally just people slapping on good gameplay and talking for about 10 minutes about what they were doing. And one of the first people to do that was Blame Truth. He was the first person I discovered and the first person I subscribed to. Uh, I really enjoyed his content. I, I don't even think I've subscribed to him now because he's he's doing different stuff and I don't really enjoy it, you know, as much as the old content he did. And it was a really cool discovery I made because I could watch these videos and then learn from them. I thought it was really, really cool to do. And then once I discovered YouTube, I basically got lost in it. Because I was discovering all these, all these new YouTubers that I would keep subscribing to. And then eventually I thought oh, I should make some. Maybe I guess just got inspired by the whole idea of it. Mick Stannard asks, what was your very first video? What are you scared of doing YouTube to start off with? Well, like I mentioned before, my first video that I uploaded to this channel was uh, the first part of a Sims 3 Xbox 360 playthrough. I uploaded that sometime around June in 2011. I'm not too sure. But uh, you can find that just like browsing on my channel and going from videos, sorting them out by oldest to newest. Was I scared of doing it? I wouldn't say I was scared. I just kind of um, experienced it as a weird feeling. The fact that I wasn't talking to anyone and the fact that this was going to go on the internet and anyone could see it. Maybe think a little, made me a little bit nervous, but I wasn't scared at all. But I definitely am not the same person I was back then and the same person I am now in terms of how I, I don't know, talk <laughs> through the videos. Because of course I've been doing this for two years now and I'm going to pick up certain skills. I don't want to say I pick up skills, but I get used to it is what I'm meant to say. And you get better and better at it. Just, just like anything else, you know, practice makes perfect. But yeah, those are the majority of the questions I got about like, say, I don't know, like 50. Uh, sorry if I didn't get to pick you. This is actually an hour and 10 minutes recording. Jesus Christ. I might have to cut that down a bit or split it into two parts at least. Is it? Is this in two parts? Who knows? Yeah, so sorry if I started to get a little bit tired towards the end. I've been talking for an hour straight. I think I shouldn't spend too long on one question next time. But uh, anyway, guys. Thanks for watching this q and I want to thank you all individually for 200,000 subscribers. Thank you so much. It really, really does mean a lot, guys. And I couldn't be more thankful. So, yeah, thank you, guys. And I'll see you in my next video. Lemon out.